2019's Creature in the Well has the benefit of being almost instantly alluring, its title suggesting a dark, almost M. Night Shyamalan-style story. Its genre described by the developer as a top-down, pinball-inspired hack-and-slash dungeon crawler. Yeah, you heard that right. Pinball-inspired. So I thought, hey, I like pinball. I like video games. Robots are pretty neat. Monsters uh, freak me out a little bit. But hey, let's give this one a shot. In five years, once the game is discounted. I purchased Creature in the Well for three and a half bucks, which was practically a steal considering it took me just over three hours to beat. It's like a dollar an hour. The eponymous creature in the well is the primary antagonist here, having halted the construction of a weather machine located in his mountain that has the power to free a small desert community from an eternal sandstorm packed full of Doritos, apparently. We play as a robot responsible for the upkeep of this weather machine, and it's clear that the creature here is not a fan. What follows is your little robot's attempt to return power to the mountain's weather machine, all while being stalked from below by the creature's unwavering gaze. It's a truly unique setup that the game never leans into as much as I was hoping it would. Not to hold it to the high standards of something like Chell and GLaDOS's relationship in Portal, but the creature rarely comes off as too threatening. Even after reading some of the in-game lore, which I appreciate was very brief and relatively engaging, so good job there. To me, Creature in the Well feels like an experience where the gameplay came first, and a story was built to fit around it. Turns out that when the developer describes the game as a top-down, pinball-inspired hack-and-slash dungeon crawler, I mean, yeah. That's pretty spot on. Your job is to go through each area, knocking, charging, and redirecting energy pellets into nodes in order to harvest their electricity, which will, in turn, allow you to power up doors and devices and open up secret areas that really aren't all that secret. They just kind of open up sometimes when you complete a room. It's, it's really not that big of a deal. After introducing you to a few simple rooms, the game begins to ratchet up the complexity. Timed nodes, corrupted pellets, moving targets, and exploding pillars, which will be responsible for 95% of your deaths. The difficulty was fairly tame at first, and even into the late game, the boss fights where the creature sort of pulls you into a pit and forces you to fight your way back up weren't necessarily rage-inducing, save for one that took the difficulty knob and cranked it up to 11. Luckily, you have a fair amount of customizable weaponry to tip the scales in your favor should the need arise. Exploring some of the secret rooms will provide you with a host of new weapons, each catering to a different style of play. Some might arc electricity to other nodes. Others may slow down time, allowing for a more accurate hit. Of all the things Creature in the Well does right, which is quite a bit, the amount of customization and how significantly it can affect the ease of your progression was a definite highlight. Honestly, aside from a bit of repetition setting in in the late game, Creature in the Well plays magnificently. The controls are mostly very tight and accessible. That said, I could have done with a bit more creativity in the level design. Now, don't get me wrong, what's here works. Most of the rooms are designed for you to get in and out at a pretty good pace, so there has to be some degree of simplicity. But like, there's this optional room you can find near the end of the game where you're guiding a pellet around dangerous terrain and avoiding lasers and stuff, and it was really tough, and probably wouldn't have worked well in that dungeon setting, but maybe a few more challenge rooms would have helped elevate the game to even greater heights. Here's another missed opportunity. The small desert community is pretty boring. In between your dungeoning, you can visit the town of Mirage, the dusty desert outpost town at the heart of Creature in the Well, where you will meet its kind, spirited citizens. Okay, see, that's a bit misleading, because there are just two characters in the game that you can actively interact with. Everyone else is like hunkered down in their homes, COVID quarantine style. Now, I do find it funny that during an interview with IGN, the developer kind of sheepishly confirms that there's like no supporting cast aside from the blacksmith and the frog janitor guy. But there are secrets to find in town and there's people to talk to, so. How much of a supporting cast is there to this game? So, um, there's just two. Okay. Roger and Danielle. The rest of the people in town are too afraid of you to come out of their houses. So you don't oh. meet them, you don't get to meet them. That's a shame. Game. I don't know. I feel like having at least two or three more people to interact with would have helped give my mission a bit more narrative weight, as well as help build the overall atmosphere just a bit better. Because pretty much all we have here is Anakin Skywalker's worst nightmare. It's just a. A lot of sand. Sand! It's everywhere! Get used to it! Creature in the Well was a game I was expecting to enjoy due to its story and atmosphere, but in reality, it was the gameplay that kept me hooked. Everything else felt... 
fine. The story, it's serviceable. The presentation, it works. There's some nice tunes here and there, but nothing too jaw-dropping. As an indie title, Creature in the Well is good. Not great, but really good. I would have liked to see the developer take the concept just a bit further in some areas, but for three and a half bucks, being a pinball wizard wasn't half bad. A pinball wizard.